if there was anything close to concrete evidence that suggested that Lennon had expected the Beatles to reunite at some point, it came 10 days before his death. According to the book by Keith Bedman, The Beatles After the Breakup, 1970-1980, Keith Bedman's book states that John Lennon, just shortly before the fateful day of December 8, submitted a swarm deposition against the producers of Beatlemania, citing his personal interest regarding his future plans to involve himself with a Beatles documentary entitled The Long and Winding Road, later renamed as The Anthology, as suggested by George Harrison, along with a reunion concert as a tie-in to that project. Keith Bedman reports that on Friday, November 28, 1980, as a part of the legal deposition for Apple Corps against the producers of the Beatlemania stage show, John states today that I and the three other former Beatles have plans to stage a reunion concert, an event to be filmed and included as the finale to The Long and Winding Road, an official Beatles produced documentary to be released in the mid 80s. John's deposition will not be made public until the case is settled on June 4, 1986. So Lennon had a great incentive to claim that the Beatles would be getting back together and that such a statement would help them in their lawsuits against Beatlemania. It doesn't mean that any of them actually intended to go through with it in the mid 80s or at all for that matter. But at the same time, the long and winding road anthology documentary clearly wasn't something he pulled out of nowhere either. It did happen, albeit without a living John Lennon and Neil Aspinall mentioning in interviews at the time of the Beatles anthology that it was something that Lennon was on board with at some point. John had already decided to go back to England to participate with Paul McCartney in Ringo's next album, Stop and Smell the Roses. Jack Douglas, double fantasy producer, talks about it twice with details. According to him, John could not stop talking about the Beatles while recording his last album. Paul had already agreed with John, he had even signed the document. Lennon had told Douglas, George Harrison wasn't yet aboard, but Lennon expected he would be when it got going. We must do it because we want to be together as people first and secondly to be together uh, for the music and then everything else would fall into place. George said that John had reached out to him not long before John's death. Nothing specific, but George said that John had communicated with him and George felt that John wanted to re-establish a relationship. George saw it as a hopeful sign to become friends again. On the 6th of December, John phoned his aunt Mimi to tell her he was coming home. He would have returned to Britain during 1981 for the first time in 10 years. So combining Lennon's remarks to Double Fantasy, producer Jack Douglas, Ringo's new album and the Lennon Beatlemania deposition clearly indicate this is real and forthcoming. Not to mention the Espinel's documentary project that all four had already agreed to. John also mentioned in his home recording from 1979 that he was planning to visit the UK in 1981. It would have been a safe bet that any visit would have been timed to coincide with Ringo and Barbara's wedding and we would have seen the four of them in the same room for the first time since 1969. This occasion would have probably greased a possible musical reunion in the years ahead. Oh, that's a lovely bass! I love it! <laughs> John always liked to keep his options open, so it's possible that he wanted to get into the studio with Paul just to play on Ringo songs as a kind of trial balloon. Maybe they drum up a song or two at those sessions and that leads to new Beatles material. Maybe it doesn't, but it would have been a low pressure situation. If that had miraculously occurred, even if George's contribution was overdubbed later, it is likely that whatever song or few songs they came up with would have been a single or just like the ultimate anthology albums, they could have been new Beatles songs for the documentary soundtrack mixed in with all low takes. Those who were working close to John during the final months of his storied life hinted at the Beatles possibly reuniting for John's planned world tour in 1981. While any speculation is purely hearsay based on comments from those claiming to be in the know, the dialogue wrecks of John's confidence in that he was indeed the linchpin for a reunion to happen. Perhaps he needed an excuse to give the go-ahead 
whether it was his tour or live aid, as some have speculated, or the blessing of Yoko Ono, which eventually did make it happen, but for reasons beyond our comprehension, he just couldn't bring himself personally to outright declare it official to the world while he was still with us on the physical plane. And the Beatles legacy may be better off for it, for it is alive and well, and touching yet another generation as it's done more than once already. John may never have admitted this, but his old chum Paul probably sums it up best when he simply stated, let it be. I don't know, Ellie, because you know me, I go on instinct and if the idea hit me tomorrow, you know, I might call him and say, come on, let's do something. And so I couldn't really tell you. If it happens, it'll happen. You know. So it is not something that you would totally rule out as never taking place again? No, no. My memories are now all fond and the wounds are healed. And if we do it, we do it. If we record, we record. I don't know. It, as long as we make music, you know. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. <laughs> well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of them. <laughs> well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles.